One of the most critical things for actually creating a video game is actually having a player that can move, look around, and interact with the environment. Regardless of if it's a 2D space or a 3D space, both are equally as critical. And while I'm not gonna focus on 2D, I'm starting to learn Godot myself. And so while I'm learning all the little tricks and nuances that come with Godot, I wanted to take this and make a video to share with you guys to show you guys some of the things that I'm learning while using Godot. So in this video, I wanna make things really simple and create a very simple character that can move around and look around the environment. We won't actually be adding in any sort of interactive elements or anything just yet, but I want to start getting that character set up so that way we have a very nice easy setup. And setting up a character in Godot is actually incredibly easy, so I'll show you guys all the setup that I have learned so far so that way you guys can apply that towards your own games. With that, let's go and jump right into the next reality. All right, if you're fairly new to Godot or you're brand new to it, I, either one. Um, don't worry, I am too. I'm, I'm still learning Godot as well as I mentioned in the intro. Um, I am going to be doing my best to keep everything as simple as possible so you can hopefully follow along. So I've gone ahead and spun up a brand new project. I don't have anything in here. You can see over here in the file system. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. We're gonna start by creating our world. And if you haven't created a world before, it's pretty simple. Um, I typically start by creating a Node 3D. I'll go ahead and save our world too. I usually like putting it all into a folder called Scenes. Um, that's where I usually like to put like levels and things like that um, from my experience so far. And then we need to add in a mesh instance 3D. We need to give this some sort of mesh. So let's go and do a box mesh. And this is gonna be the platform that we walk around on. There we go. And we'll go and scale this up nice and simple there. I won't make it too big or anything like that. I just want to be big enough that I have a little bit of space to walk around on. And then I'm going to go ahead and up here in our mesh, create a collision shape. I'm gonna make this a static body child and just do single convex. That should be perfectly fine for our collision. And then also just to make sure everything looks pretty nice, I'm also gonna go and hit this drop down and just click add sun to scene, add environment to scene. Those aren't necessary. It just kind of makes it look a little better when you're ac actually playing everything. Otherwise you don't get any lighting. Um, you don't get an actual environment. It just kind of, it's basically a bunch of static colors. <laughs> it's kind of how it looks like. Um, so it just kind of makes it a, li a little easier to uh, visually see everything. Um, perfect. Now let's go ahead and create our player. So I'm gonna create another uh, folder for this. Go and call it player. And then in our player, we're going to create a new scene and I'll just call it player. Um, I'll, yeah, call it player like that. And then um, we don't want it to be a 2D, 3D or user interface. I'm gonna click this little um, box here. And what we actually want this to be is a character body 3D. Character body 3D is actually a lot easier. It's got a lot of the uh, built-in movement components and uh, physics stuff set up. Um, so it'll have everything you need. So we go and hit, click OK on that. And it'll, it'll basically create a whole new scene for you. Um, in case you're new to Godot, Godot works with a bunch of different scenes. So everything you use is a scene and you can embed scenes in other scenes. So our player's a scene, our, <laughs> our uh, world is a scene. Uh, basically everything is a scene. I could quite literally take our world and put it into the player and then take the player and put it into the world, things like that. Um, you're not meant to do it in that way, <laughs> but uh, you could if you really want to. All right, so here we have our player. You're gonna see right now we do have a little warning. This is because we don't have any collision on our player yet. So if we go ahead, we're gonna add in a, I misspelled collision, collision shape 3D. And then we need to give this an actual shape. So we'll do a, I usually like to do a capsule shape. I think that's nice and clean. And then I also like to shift that up so it's nice and level with the ground. I know where everything's at. And then we also need to give ourselves a camera, 3D. Okay, this is gonna allow for us to actually see around the world. Um, and I usually like to space it out either at the top or I like to put it just underneath the uh, top of our capsule. You can kind of space that out however you'd like, but that's generally how I like to do that. And uh, that's all the setup that we need here. Now all we need to do is actually add in all of our movement logic. So if we come right over here, click on player, we're going to add in a script. Um, you can leave it just called player.gd. 
but the one thing you do want to make sure of, you do want to make sure that you have template checked and you want to make sure that we have character body 3D basic movement. You shouldn't really have any other options and this should automatically be checked, but just make sure that that is selected. It'll generate a default template um, script that we can build from. So go and create there. And this actually applies all of the movement for us. This isn't perfect, however. There is one um, thing that I don't like about the movement that gets set up. These UI left, UI right, UI up, and UI down are automatically mapped to the arrow keys. Now, if you want, you can leave it that way. I like to remap these to WASD. So to do this, we'll go ahead and hit project settings. And we wanna go into our input map and we can click show built-in actions. And what you'll see is, if I go and move that out of the way, we have our UI accept, which is over here for our jump. Um, we have our, let's see, where is it? UI left, which you can see is mapped to our left arrow key. Our UI right, which is our right arrow key, UI up and UI down. So you have a couple different options here. Uh, you can either just modify the built-in functions. That's what I'm going to stick with because it's also got things for our joy pads. Um, or you can create a whole new action. I'm not gonna go into that. We're just gonna create, um, we're, we're just gonna build off what we have here. So just go and hit that plus. If we go and hit whatever key we need on our keyboard, it should automatically select it for us. So we'll do A, um, this is right. So we're gonna do right, we'll go and do up, and then we'll go ahead and do down. And that should be everything that we need to do. So let's go and close out of there. And that should allow for us to have a player that we can move around the environment. So if we go and drop in our player here, um, we need the player.tscn, that's our scene there. Um, and I just wanna make sure that that is placed roughly correctly, it does seem to be. Let's go and save that. We can go ahead and hit, we can go ahead and hit run project. And the first time you run it, it's going to say that we don't have a default project uh, or a default level setup our default scene as Godot calls it. So if you're in world, you can go ahead and just hit select current, or you can hit select and you can navigate to wherever you have the level in your project. So let's go ahead and hit open. <clears throat> and you'll see that right now we have our WASD keys moving. And same with the arrow keys if we use that. I don't have my uh, controller hooked up right now, but if I had controller that should be working just fine as well. Now we are not obviously looking around, so let's go ahead and fix that. Let's go and go into our player again. Um, if you need to get into, script, into the script again, you can either click script up here, or you can click on this little script icon off here to the left. That'll open up the specific script for our player if you have multiple going on. And then we need to actually handle our mouse input. So this actually requires two different steps. First thing we need to do is do a func underscore ready. This is a default method that comes in most, if not all scripts. And this just runs the moment we start this script. So scripts are meant to be reused. You can reuse the script in a non-player character as well if you really want to. Um, but I'm only gonna be using this for the player. That's all this one's for. So this func ready will basically run whenever we run this script on any node that we have. So when we do funk ready, what we want to do is we want to do input dot mouse mode, and then we want to equal this to mouse mode dot captured. And what this does is if I go ahead and hit play again, you'll see our mouse is now gone. We no longer have our mouse there whatsoever. Um, let me go and stop that. Best way to get out of that, by the way, is alt tab and just hit the stop button up here. That'll stop the uh, running. Um, that will lock our mouse in the game itself and allow for us to capture that mouse input. Now, how do we go about ca capturing the mouse input itself? That's also pretty simple. We want to do a func underscore unhandled input. Okay. This is going to uh, give us a function that basically gives us any input that is not handled by Godot. Um, it's kind of self-explanatory, I guess. Um, I, I guess that kind of depends. So, <laughs> um, you can also hit control select. It'll tell you, um, when the input event isn't consumed by input. There you go. Uh, <laughs> so let's go ahead. Uh, let's actually do something with our input. So if event, uh, is, I believe it's input event dot 
or no, it's input dot, uh, what was it? There we go, input event mouse motion. That's what we want, okay? Um, I'm just gonna do that to get rid of the errors. Um, so what this does in this instance here, we have our event. This is actually a defined parameter by unhandled input. So you can see here, this is our, um, this is the name of our parameter. This is the type that that parameter is. And we're just gonna check to make sure that it is, is a mouse motion. That's gonna mean that our mouse is moving. All right, so now that we have our mouse input, um, the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is actually do something with that mouse input. This is gonna require a couple things. The first thing is going to be that we're going to need a couple of parameters. First one that I'm making here is for mouse sensitivity. Now, this is obviously optional. If you wanna just hard code that sensi sensitivity, that's perfectly fine. Um, but mouse sensi sensitivity tends to be a little bit high for my liking. And so I tend to uh, just kind of click it down a little bit. I usually start at 0.1. I find that that's generally a pretty good value to start with, uh, but you can play around with that as you would like. Now, the next two that we're going to need um, are both kind of linked together as well. Uh, this one's gonna be rotation X, and the next one is going to be rotation Y. These are going to allow for us to control the tilt of our camera, as well as the rotation of our actual character itself. And we'll modify both of these um, so that way we can apply these to both the player and the camera. Now, since we have that, um, starting with our rotation Y, we're gonna decrease this equal to an event.relative.x, and then we'll just go ahead and multiply this by our mouse sensitivity. Um, rotation Y, from what I recall, um, trying to make sure I'm remembering this correctly, is going to be our uh, character rotation. Uh, rotation X is going to be for our camera. So uh, rotation X is basically gonna be the same thing. The only difference with this one is we're going to be decreasing by the uh, uh, events.relative.y as opposed to the .x like we did uh, with rotation Y. Um, and one other thing that we're going to want to do as well before we actually apply these rotations is I want to make sure that our rotation X, we actually want to clamp this one down because this one's for a camera. If we don't clamp this down, what might actually end up happening is our mouse can kind of bend all the way backwards. So that way we're upside down and backwards, or we can have the same thing happen in reverse where we can keep looking down and down and down. And then we're again in the same situation where we are now down and backwards, basically. So clamping this value down to negative uh, 90, 90 will allow for us to get, if not exactly, it'll allow for us to get pretty close to being able to look straight down and straight up without us being able to continue going and bending backwards later on. All right, that's all that we need for the rotations. We're gonna go ahead and apply them now. So first off, we're gonna start with rotation degrees dot y. This is going to be equal to our rotation Y. And then next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is basically the same thing, but for a camera. However, there's a couple ways that you can get references to different nodes uh, in Godot. You could quite literally just grab the camera 3D and just drag it down. It'll give you a nice little reference. Um, that is perfectly fine if you want to do it that way. Um, it's just, very simple to do. You can see this, this is how it works. Um, however, I like to try and make my scripts modular as that's the way Godot kind of prefers for you to do things. All your scripts are meant to be modular. So um, I don't like referencing things this way if, I, if it's not absolutely necessary or if there's even a chance that I might reuse this script in the future. So what I like to do is just come right on up here. We'll do an at export then what we're going to do is export will allow for us to set the camera 3D in the uh, editor here, and I'll show you in a second. And then we're gonna do var camera, and then we're just gonna make it a type of camera 3D. Um, that's exactly what our camera is. So if we go and click on player off here to the right, you'll now see that there is under player.gd, the camera option, so you can click assign. You can also just drag and drop the camera 3D over just like this that works perfectly fine as well. And that just gives us a nice clean little reference to the camera itself. And then we'll do exactly what we did. We're gonna grab our camera. We're gonna do the rotation degrees dot X this time. And then that's going to be equal to our rotation X just as you would expect. Now, if we go ahead and hit play, 
Our mouse is gonna be locked. You'll be able to see that we are able to look and move around. We can look all the way up and we can also look all the way down. It's not very clear, obviously, um, but if I get a little closer to the edge here, you can kind of see that we're, if not perfectly, we're, we're pretty close to looking straight down and straight up. Um, and movement still works fine and uh, gravity also does work fine as well. So we could even just jump off the edge. And that's it. We now have a very simple character that can look around, move around the environment. Obviously, this is very far from actually having a full-blown game, but this is a great starting point for actually being able to see our environment, and we can obviously build off this in a ton of different ways, whether we're creating an FPS or just a very simple interactive puzzle game or anything else that you might have. With that, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next reality.